Now, load shedding is wreaking havoc on South Africa's economy. As ESCOM struggles to keep the lights on, cell phone companies are desperately trying to keep their clients connected and open for business. For more on this, I'm joined by Executive for Corporate Affairs at MTN, Jackie O'Sullivan. Very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. The impact of load shedding has been massive for people's personal lives, households and business. Communication has also been affected because uh, staying connected on a reliable network has also been a huge challenge. Absolutely. Um, a point for the mobile operators for, for some years now. Um, from an MTN perspective, we have been rolling out batteries to our sites over the last two years. Um, we've increased that um, the upgrading of our batteries by 80, for 80% 80 of our, our, our sites just in the last few months. Um, the problem is the batteries do get stolen, um, which is a, a huge concern for us. Um, and then um, when, when the batteries are, are, are actually in place, um, they have a, a 6 to 12 hour capacity, but they take 12 hours to, re, to recharge. So once we hit um, stage 4 or stage 6 load shedding, the problem is the batteries don't have enough time to, uh, to recharge in between the load shedding. So that is a, is a significant concern, which has resulted in us um, having to roll out petrol generators as well, um, which is you know, critical to keep our, our customers connected, um, but obviously not ideal. We, we're, we're spending um, huge amounts. We're, we're using 400,000 litres of fuel a month at the moment just on diesel generators. So it's a, it's a very expensive exercise. It's not the most environmentally friendly either. Um, so it's, it's a problem, but, you know, we really are trying to tackle this with a positive but a connected and the impact on individuals, it's businesses, but small businesses that are often the most badly affected by this. And, and that's really the, the, the people whose um, contribution to the economy is what we're trying to secure. So this is going to work in the form of crowdsourcing generators to boost small business. Yeah, you know, South Africa, uh, MT in South Africa is, is really born out of South Africa's democracy. So we try to really take a different view on things and try to look at the positives and look for some sort of a solution-orientated approach. And what we're saying is there are small businesses out there. Um, we are trying through our enterprise development programs to bring more small businesses into the telecommunications industry. It's something that government has spoken about, the regulators have spoken about. And we see this crisis as an opportunity for small operators. If companies have got a few generators, we would like to partner with them. So we'd like to find a way to, to bring those small operators in. You know, normally huge companies like MTN will make use of a large tender, a large contract will go to a big operator. We obviously work um, directly with, with local operators on, on all projects where we can. But this, we think, is an opportunity for us to really help develop small businesses. You know, if a, if a business has got a few generators, they can take over some of the sites and actually manage them and, and make sure that those sites stay connected because really it's just I'm trying to keep customers um, in touch with, with, their, uh, with their families, friends and with their businesses. So let's talk about some of the power contingencies that you're putting in place across the provinces and uh, how that will assist with the impact of load shedding being so massive on, on also, also business, as you make reference to. Yeah, we've, we've basically put all across the country and all of the province. We have 24-hour operations to be able to monitor our networks on a normal basis, but we've now changed those to be specifically focused not just on the network in general, but specifically on power supply. This will allow us to see where we have batteries that are perhaps being hit by the load shedding, where we need to send generators. So it really is a, kind of a high-intensity um, operational program that's in place there. We've also had to rejig our field maintenance crews. So these are the teams that go out and maintain our networks. We've really re-looked at what work they're doing out in the field, and we've put them really to support the resilience program that we've got in place. So we're working to make sure that they're constantly out there, making sure that generators are refueled, batteries are operating successfully. And, uh, and also we're looking at community programs to see how we can partner with communities to help us protect these batteries. You know, these batteries are often stolen on a mass scale. They, um, 
they, they are hugely expensive. Um, and the impact on the communities is immediate because immediately those communities lose their, their connectivity during load shedding. So a lot of work is going into t to see how we can actually work with communities. The most success we have in looking after batteries is when we've got um, really concerned citizens keeping an eye out, working closely with the police and the local security services that are working with them. And, and that's where we can keep communities um, most connected. And then, as we say, getting those generators out there, making sure that they stay fueled and, and just getting through the worst of this power crisis. These battery backup systems, uh, besides the, you know, the, the part where they could get stolen, I also understand that load shedding has a huge impact on how long they're able to charge for. That's exactly right. So the, the, the real problem that we have is when we have um, stage one, two or three load shedding, the batteries have got sufficient time to recharge. Um, you normally get six to 12 hours of support out of a battery, but then they need 12 to 18 hours to recharge. So when we have load shedding that's happening every three to four hours, those batteries don't get sufficient time to recharge. This um, means the batteries aren't as effective and it actually has an impact on how the batteries perform in the long run. So they tend to run down faster um, than they would have, very, very much the way um, you're always instructed to you know, fully charge your, your cell phone the first time you receive it um, and to let your devices run down. That's the kind of um, same sort of situation we have with these. So that's why um, looking at generators in once we pass stage four, that's really what we have to do because then, then we're relying on, on fuel rather than the electricity that we get between load shedding. Mm, very well. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Jackie O'Sullivan, an MTN executive for corporate affairs, speaking about the impact of the rolling blackout on cell phone companies.